Now that we've learned how to get data from a file into a data frame, it's time to learn how to do some useful things with that data frame. When we operate on the columns of a data frame, we are essentially working with vectors. So the same kind of vectorized operations that we could perform on vectors, we can also perform on columns in data frames. So for example, we use the length function to find out the number of items in a vector. We can also use the length function to find out the number of rows in a column by inserting the dollar sign notation for that column inside the function. We can also find out the type of data that is found in that column by using the mode function. Recall that in vectors, you may only have a single type of data in a vector. We say that, that vectors are homogeneous. The same thing is true of columns in data frames. All of the items that are in a column in a data frame must be homogeneous because as we said, they are essentially vectors. If we perform an operation on a data frame column, then usually the output, unless it's a sort of summary function like this, is going to have, is going to be a vector whose length is the number of rows that there are in that column. So for example, if we take a column of a data frame and multiply it by seven, then we are going to produce a vector whose length is the same as the number of rows in that column with each of those items multiplied by seven. If we perform a two vector operation on two columns, then just as pairwise operations are done on each item in two vectors, pairwise operations will be done on the items that are in the same row in those two columns. And the result will be a vector whose length is the same number of items as the number of rows in the columns. One of the topics that I have sort of glossed over is what happens if you try to perform a vector operation on two vectors that are not the same length. R has a behavior which people, some people call recy vector recycling. What this means is that if you are performing an operation on two vectors that are supposed to be the same length, but they're not, then R will automatically repeat the shorter one until it's long enough to complete the operation. Here's an example. We, let's say we have a vector with two items, and we try to add it to a vector with five items. What it will simply do is repeat the first uh, two items in the first vector, however many times necessary to equal the number of items in the second vector. Since there are five items in the second vector, it will repeat these um, basically an additional time and then another half of a time in order to come up with five items. So the resulting vector will be 1 plus 10, 2 plus 15, 1 plus 17, 2 plus 5, and 1 plus 1, which will be a vector that has a length of 5, which is the length of the longest vector. It's uh, not necessarily an error for this to happen. Sometimes we apply a vector to another vector or a column that's a different length on purpose because of uh, the way that we're designing the operation we're trying to carry out. But other times um, it's accidental. We don't realize that our two vectors are not the same. So if the number of times that it has to repeat the first vector comes out evenly, 
then R will generally go ahead and perform the operation because usually if it's intentional, we want things to come out even. If it doesn't come out even, then R becomes suspicious that uh, you actually made a mistake and you didn't intend to uh, apply the operation to two vectors that are different lengths. And so it will provide you with a warning. We can go ahead and try out vector recycling using the example that I just gave. So first, let's create vector A. We see it has appeared in the global environment. Now let's create vector B. Now let's add vector A and B. It has displayed the answer, the one that we anticipated, and notice the warning message. Longer object length is not a multiple of shorter object length. So this could be uh, a sign that we have made a mistake and not realized that the two vectors are not the same length. Because there is no practical difference between a column in a data frame and a vector, there is no reason why we can't mix those two things in the same operation. So, for example, in our case where we had a description of organisms telling the number of legs that each one had, we could create a vector where each item in the vector represents the number of wings that those organisms have with the items in that number of wings vector corresponding to the rows from top to bottom in our organism info table. So if we want to find the total number of appendages, which would be wings plus legs, we could simply add this vector that we just created with the column, which is itself a vector, and it would do a pairwise addition between the item in the first the first item in the vector and the first row in the column, the second item in the vector and the second row in the column, and so forth. The output would be itself a vector, which would have four items corresponding to the number of items in the vector and also the number of rows in the data frame. Since I've cleared my global environment, since I used the uh, organism info data frame. Let's go back up in the script and recreate it. So I've recreated the three vectors. Now I'm going to put them together and turn them into the organism info data frame, which I can see right here. Now, if I go down to the example, I will create the number of wings vector. And here I see it in my global environment. And then to calculate the number of appendages, I will take the number of legs column from the organism info table, it should be four, eight, zero, and six. And I will add the number of wings vector to it. And I can see here that the number of appendages is indeed the number of wings plus the number of legs. If we want to perform an operation where the vector is not the same as the number of rows in the column, then the recycling process that I described will happen. So in this example, we have a, a table that is the number of telephone calls that were made on each day of the month. And if we want to screen those out to find only the calls that were made on weekdays, we can create a vector where uh, zero is for Sunday and Saturday, the week end days. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday all have ones. Those would be the weekdays. If we apply this vector to the table by multiplying the weekday vector times the column with the number of calls in it, we can uh, come up with a vector that only includes calls that were made on weekdays.
let's take a look at what this looks like in an example. I've provided an example which you can load from a URL. We are going to load it as a tibble, so that's why I'm using read underscore CSV rather than read dot CSV. Let's go ahead and read in that table and take a look at it. So here's the calendar table. If we click on this, we can see that the first column is the days of the week, Monday through Saturday, repeating over and over again. And then here is the day of the month, starting from the first and going all the way through the 31st. The third column, which is the one we're interested in, is the number of calls that were made on each day. So if, for example, we wanted to add up the calls that were only made on the weekdays, then we would want to essentially eliminate the weekend calls. So we can do this as I described. Let's go ahead and create the weekday vector. So here we see zeros for Sunday and Saturday, ones for all the rest of the weekdays. Now, if we multiply that vector times the number of calls column, let's see what happens. Okay, so I received the warning because there's seven days in a week. 31 divided by seven does not come out evenly, so it gives me the warning. If I want to see what the result is, I can simply put the name of the vector I made, and I can see here that the Sunday and Saturday values of calls have been turned to zero because I multiplied them by zero whereas the weekday calls have their same value because I multiplied them by one. In a future lesson, we'll learn how to do things like taking the sum and do other sorts of simple statistics on columns of tables or vectors.